Well, good morning, everybody. Good to have you with us this morning on Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to the fathers in the, in the room this morning. And uh, can I make the announcement, my darling? I can't? Oh, okay. Oh. Well, I've, I've, I've become a poppy again. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> anyway, let's stand together. We're going to sing, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. And I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Uh, you came from heaven to earth. Let's sing it together. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, my dead to pay, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way, from the earth to the cross, my dead to pay, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way, from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. that rise from earth to touch your heart and glorify your name. Your name is a strong and mighty tower. Your name is a shelter like no other. Your name, let the nations sing it louder because nothing has the power to say. like no other your name let the nation sing it louder because nothing has the power to say but your name as morning dawns and evening fades you inspire songs of praise that rise to earth to touch your heart and glorify your name. Your name is a strong and mighty tower. Your name is a shelter like no other. Your name, let the nation sing it louder, because nothing has the power to say. Your 
a shelter like no other. Your name, let the nations sing it louder, because nothing has the power to say but your name. strong and mighty tower your name is a shelter like no other your name let the nation sing it louder because nothing has the power to say but your name everybody has a name we're all named by something aren't we but there's a name that is far above all names Jesus Christ, our, 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 our Savior. His name is a strong and mighty tower. His name is like a shelter, like no other. His name, let the nations sing it louder. Because one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that name. Because nothing has the power to say but His name. Your name is a strong and mighty tower. Your name is a shelter like no other. Your name, let the nations sing it louder, because nothing has the power to say but your name. Hallelujah.
that, my friends. Holy, holy Lord God Almighty. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Highest praises of honor and glory be unto your name. That is the love song that we sing to Almighty God. That is the love song that we sing. Let's sing that chorus again. Holy, holy Lord God Almighty, worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Highest praises, honor and glory be unto your name. Be unto your name. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. Our Father, we come into your presence just now and we thank you and we praise you for the privilege that we have of just sitting in your presence and for all that we do and all that we say just to glorify your name. And so, Heavenly Father, as we sit this morning and as we stand in awe of your holiness and your glory and your, your almightiness, Lord, we cry out, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Father God, we come to you and we recognize that your presence, even just as I was uh, pushing the buttons down there for easy worship, uh, forgetting to push the buttons, Lord, because I was just so caught up in your presence and the spirit in which you are moving from person to person. And so, Father God, today as we worship, today as we just acknowledge you in our hearts as Lord and King and King of everything, Lord, we give ourselves to you. We reach out to you. Lord, we pray this morning for so many people within our community and within our congregation who may be hurting, Lord, in so many different ways. And Lord, we ask that for them today that you would just wrap your arms of peace and love and contentment just around them right now, wherever they find themselves. Lord, may they know that having a relationship with Jesus Christ will help them in the process of grieving, in the process of their hurt, in their brokenness. And so, Father, we just ask today that as we continue to worship here in this place and for those who are found throughout the airwaves, whether at home, whether they're sitting in their vehicles, whether they're sitting on their couch, on their deck, wherever they are right now and throughout the week as people tune in and worship as well. Lord, we pray your blessing. May you, your spirit visit them where they are as your spirit is visiting us where we are today. For this we pray in Jesus' name, giving thanks. Amen. I approached Verna this past week or a couple weeks ago about uh, doing some prayer prompts. And uh, she prayed about it and she felt that this was something that she would like to take on as a ministry. And so on the table in the foyer uh, is the copy of the email, actually. And if, I apologize, I didn't, it needs to be blown up a little bigger even for my eyesight to see it. And so this is something that she is willing to do monthly. And simply what it is on day one, the prompts for your first 30 days of prayer. And she starts off with pray over yourself first. The scripture says, I pray that you, God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, that you would enlighten the eyes of my understanding, that I may know the hope of your calling, the riches of your glory of the saints' inheritance, and what is the exceeding greatness of your power that you have for us who believe in you according to the working of your mighty power, which you worked in Jesus Christ. And so feel free to help yourself uh, to these prayer prompts. 
It's just simply another tool to be able to add to our uh, focus on discipleship and on prayer. And day one says, we pray for your family. And then there's a scripture to read, Psalm 103, 17 to 18. Day two, pray for your neighborhood and your neighbors. And so it just kind of gives a, maybe a little different focus, a prompt in our life uh, to be able to pray differently over the next uh, few weeks and months as we go throughout the summer and as we recommence in the fall of the season. And so I invite you to do this uh, uh, I've come to appreciate the group that has been on the Zoom Bible study and prayer time over the last two years, actually on Monday nights, and uh, with Ken doing his Bible study recently, and to, just to know their hearts uh, for God's word, and uh, and so and learning to be a Nehemiah. And so one of the ways that we can learn to be a Nehemiah is to extend our prayer time. And be prompted by God's spirit uh, to do so. And so may the Lord bless you as you take that on for you. As you can see, there's Ken and I doing everything this morning. And so we thought this morning as part of our, our Father's Day um, word and presentation of the word, we're going to share a video that Ken's dad uh, and Ken and Matt uh, who Ken referenced earlier, he's a poppy. Well, that's a story for another time. And uh, so um, that's part we felt strongly that this was much, uh, I'll be honest, much easier <laughs> for us and, uh, and felt God leading us in this way. And so as we worship in this way, uh, may the Lord bless you. It's just been a very um, quiet, reflective, spiritual presence in this place this morning. Sitting back there and listening to your voices was absolutely beautiful. And uh, God is in this place all the time, all the time, because he's in our hearts. And so may we be blessed this morning. Welcome, everybody, to Whitby Online. It's so good to have you with us today. And, of course, today is Father's Day. And as you can see by our screen today, we're doing a little bit of a Zoom call with a great-grandfather, grandfather, and a father. And we're just going to do some interview questions, and then we're going to have a devotional from the great-grandfather of the group, Major Ted Percy, my dad, and uh, Matt's grandfather and little Izzy's great-grandfather. And uh, so I'm going to start off with some questions here, and I'm going to start with uh, you, Matt, if you don't mind. Uh, if you can if you unmute yourself, there's great. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your life, um, you know, uh, your interests, kind of what you do for a living. Sure. Um, yeah, uh, obviously my name is Matt. Um, I am now uh, coming up on, what did we say, 38? soon. Um, my wife and I uh, are both into, um, <laughs> yes, uh, mostly me, but my wife and I are both interested in, in board games, uh, so much so that we've um, used them in ministry. So we, we have a ministry called Cardboard Koinonia, and we uh, use board games as a means of uh, bringing people together in fellowship. Um, so that's that's what we do, and that's yeah, that's a big part of my interests there. So that's basically what your what part of your passions. That's part of your you're passionate about that type of thing, in in ministry. That's great. Um, what about you, Dad, uh, Major Ted Percy, uh, the uh, the senior member of the group today? Well, tell us a little about yourself and and um, your life, your interests. Um, what what are you passionate about? Well, that's interesting, Ken. Great question. How much time do I have? Oh, I know. Not very much. So we'll be very careful with this. So, yes, I've had um, a great interest in a number of things over the years, primarily our ministry in the Salvation Army that has taken us across Canada and down through the States in Bermuda and England and a few other places, but uh, greatly enjoyed ministry and uh, some of the personal things that we have enjoyed over the years of course is traveling and uh, I enjoy painting I have a great uh, interest and uh, love nature 
So a lot of my artwork and painting has to do with nature. And we enjoy that. Um, we've had uh, 20 students in the past number of years in the art studio. And we always make sure that when we're involved in the painting in the studio, that we make it a uh, ministry time where we have scripture and prayer that has to do with God's provision of nature. And so that's been very, very enjoyable. We've had a wonderful time. I, I, I noticed, um, and I, I do have fond memories, too, of you enjoying, uh, you and, and mom enjoying nature on a two-wheeled um, vehicle of conveyance. Uh, and uh, you had a lot of, <laughs> a lot of uh, interesting times on motorcycles over the years. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, that's interesting, Ken. When we were, um, oh, my, back in Cornerbrook, Newfoundland, years ago, we bought a, um, a, a Honda CB900 custom motorcycle, and we used it for a number of years and enjoyed traveling around Newfoundland and, and the Maritimes. And then eventually we were transferred to Alberta, so we shipped it to Alberta with us and uh, traded it up to uh, Honda Goldwing. After we bought the Goldwing, we traveled all across Canada, up north to Vancouver and out to uh, Vancouver Island and a few other places. We had a, a wonderful time on that uh, motorcycle. And we were also involved with the motorcycle Christian group called CMA, Christian Motorcyclists Association. We were involved in that in a motorcycle ministry to other motorcyclists. And that was very, very enjoyable. And it's only in the recent years that we uh, retired and sold our motorcycle from that ministry. I remember that day. I I I I heard you sold the motorcycle, and I had tears in my eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was a lot of fun times. I remember uh, on that motorcycle with you driving through the rain and the, the storm, going from Edmonton to Red Deer, and oh. it was a real, uh, real rainy, stormy time. Uh, yeah. Matt, um, yes, I I understand, of course, by your picture there and and your beautiful little daughter. You've recently become a father uh, yourself. Um, How's that working out for you? Are you getting any sleep? <laughs> Actually, getting a, a decent amount. I've, I've been told that I shouldn't uh, share it uh, because of jealousy, but uh, Izzy has been a very great uh, uh, sleeper. She has almost always slept right through the night and given us very little uh, trouble. Um, oh, that, that's she wonderful. is now uh, in her seventh month. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah, it's been going yeah. great. She she is great. Where 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 are you working right now, Matt? What what do you do for a living? Well, uh just like everyone else in the video, I'm sporting the red shield. <laughs> uh I work for the territorial headquarters uh of the Salvation Army and I'm in the supplies and purchasing department. So, if anyone needs anything, I help supply it. <laughs> Shameful promotional work there, Matt. That's good. <laughs> Ted, talk to Matt if you need to order anything. Um, what, what does I'm going to ask you this, Dad? Um, about being a father, um, what does that mean for you, and how do you um, how does that intersect with uh, your faith, faith and fatherhood? How does that work out for you? Well, that's, that's a very, very interesting loaded question, Ken, and I appreciate that very, very much. Um, to me, fatherhood um, takes on quite a role. Personally, I have feel, felt very, very honored over the years in realization that God has placed in my care children that I've had the great privilege of being father to. And um, to me, my faith and uh, my fatherhood goes together in the fact that I appreciate my Lord who gives me direction and who over the years has given me wonderful direction and guidance insofar as family living and uh, uh, sons and daughter is concerned. And so that dovetails completely with my 
uh, ministry, my life as a father, and I feel extremely privileged as a father to now be not only a father, but a, a grandfather and a great grandfather that has brought me wonderful joys over the years, and I appreciate that so very, very much. I, I always say I continue to, to, to look up to you, my dad, my father, uh, as the um, example of a Christian gentleman. And I remember one time you said to me, as I was getting ready to enter the Salvation Army Training College for officership, how will I ever fill your shoes? And you said very wisely, you don't fill my shoes. I'm already in them. There's not enough room. You fill your own shoes. <laughs> I always remember that. I always remember that. It's so, Matt, so true. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, Matt, over to you. The same question. How does your faith intersect with being a dad? Uh, it's, it's still very new to me. Um, and, and because of that, I, I use God uh, as an example of, of, of fatherhood, uh, along with the two of you as, as well. Um, and how he treats his children. Um, yeah, I'm still very new to it and still figuring out myself. Um, but I hope that uh, I can lead her uh, and she will come to know Christ as well. And that the best I can do is uh, give her the opportunity to get to know him. And... Um, yeah, and give for the knowledge, any knowledge I have and wisdom I have. <laughs> well, that's that's very true. It says, uh, you know, train up your children. The old Crosby, Stills, and Nash song, teach your children well, you know, and you uh, you bring up your children in the ways of the Lord, and they will not soon forget it. And uh, so, it, I mean, we, we look at examples. I, I look at Dad as my example. You, if you look to me, uh, I pity you. No. <laughs> But no, you know, and, and we try to do the best for our children. We love our children. How do you balance, Matt? How do you balance everything in your life, your job, your family, your interests, your ministry, as far as cardboard koinonia uh, with, your, with your board gaming? And, and how do you balance all of that with being a dad? Uh, well, it, it helps that uh, she's only been around during these COVID times and we haven't had our opportunities for our ministry or, or to go out very often. So we've, those things have been cut off for us. Um, but uh, otherwise, um, we've, we, we agreed very early on that um, we are not, or she's not going to be our world. She's coming into ours. Um, and we're still going to live our life. Um, she's just going to be a part of it all. So uh, we've already played a lot of board games, and she's sat right there with us um, trying to eat all the cards. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some um, of those pictures. Yeah. yeah, and then if we were watching a movie, she's sitting on our lap or, or playing with her toys until it's bedtime. And, yeah, she's met a couple friends, and... She's part of the board gaming community, even yeah. at seven months old. Exactly. <laughs> well, thanks you. thank you so much for answering those questions. I, I do believe that, Dad, you've got a devotional on fatherhood and Father's Day that you would like to share with us today, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. So if you want to share, um, bring us the word today. Okay. I'm, I'm very pleased to do that, and uh, I feel very honored and privileged to be able to share just a, a simple, short word of devotional for this Father's Day. Uh, I feel honored to do that, and uh, am praising the Lord for the opportunity. Um, I realize, of course, that we are living in an age of many and great wonderful privileges, and I think of what Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus when he said, um, Fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but to give them all encouragement and, and uh, come alongside of them and be with them in that sense. And so I'm realizing, of course, with you all that uh, 
we are living in an age of many, many different privileges uh, all around the world. Wherever you go, whatever country you visit, there are various privileges. There is, for instance, there's the white privilege. There is the religious privilege. There's the gender privilege. And there is the heterosexual privilege, if you would. And there's the socio economic privilege, and so on and on it goes. But you know, to me, one of the greatest privileges of all time is the privilege of fatherhood, to be able to uh, appreciate and know the, the wonderful privilege of being a father. I recognize the fact that uh, in order to be a great father, or a real good father to your children, you must be in a position and willing to give the greatest gift to your children. And we all know that the greatest gift that you can give your children is the gift of yourself, to come alongside of them, to give them encouragement, to uphold them, to be with them in their aspirations, their goals and their endeavors, to be alongside of them constantly with encouragement. That is of the utmost of importance to your children. And I am so, so uh, in tune with that to be sure that that happens. I am remi reminded again of the, uh, of the word of Paul when he wrote to the church at Colossae. And he said at that time, fathers, do not provoke your children because it could possibly give them uh, discouragement. And so we as fathers, we, we don't want to discourage our children. We want to encourage them, give them all the encouragement we possibly can. Whatever they're doing in life, we have to give them encouragement. Now, I, I want you to realize, of course, that as a father, a grandfather, now as a great grandfather, I'm realizing that as we age and as children age, that uh, ministry uh, changes because children grow older. But you know something? I am convinced of the fact that uh, regardless of a son or a daughter is four or 40 years of age, they can always do with encouragement. They all need encouragement. So I say to all the dads out there, uh, let us get together and be sure that we give our children all the encouragement we can. And I would like to implore you all to realize the importance of children in our lives. For instance, um, I think of my wife, my wife, Phyllis. If it were not for, for Phyllis, and if it were not for you, Ken, and if it were not for Donna and Matt and Candace, uh, I would not be a dad because God has revealed to us and allowed us to have you as our children, and that has made me a dad. And I am so very, very proud of that. So I would shout out to our wives, Give them encouragement and appreciate them as well, because without them, we would not be fathers. For any dad who might be listening out there and who perhaps has had a strained relationship with a son or a daughter, this is a good time right now to recognize that and assure them of your love and to mend any relationship that might be necessary. I would implore you to, that, to do that. And may God bless you, everyone. I'm going to ask you to just have a little prayer with me at this moment. Shall we pray? Gracious Heavenly Father, giver of all grace and wisdom, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace, that all prevenient grace. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who comes guides, directs, and empowers, and uses us for your glory. Father, we pray for all the dads out there today that, that would, there would be a revival in the hearts and souls of all fathers 
who are used by you to bring about a great rela relationship with each other and with their children. We ask it all in the name of Jesus, giving thanks. Amen. 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 Well, Dad, thank you. Um, I got goosebumps. <laughs> Thank you so much for your devotion, your your prayer, and uh, thank you, Matt, for joining in. On uh, we love you so much. We love you, Dad. We love you, Matt. We love you, little Izzy. Yes, we love you, <laughs> my friends. If you've joined us today, we're just so thankful that you've joined in. And if you'd like to find out more about what the Lord Jesus can do in your life, we'd love for you to connect with us. You can, by the screen up here or up, up there, there, <laughs> connect with us. It's going to be sawhitby.ca. You can leave a confidential email. You can phone us. The number is there. We'd love to pray for you. We'd love to pray with you. My friends, God bless you and have a wonderful day. to just kind of sit and listen and to be encouraged from the word of God. We're going to sing together the chorus and the video is going to help us as the deer pants for the water. Soul, my soul longs after you. And regardless where we find ourselves in life, whether we are a father, a stepfather, uh, a mentor, a friend, whether we're a mother, uh, a stepmom, anybody in any relationship with anybody, we can be encouragers of the faith. We can uh, be part and be encourage them to come to a relationship with Jesus Christ. I invite you to stand as we reflect on this, this song together. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. And that's what it's about, isn't it? Our souls longing after Jesus Christ. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone. You. my friend, and you are my brother, even though you are a king. You're my friend, and you are my brother, even though you are a king. I love you more than any other, so much more than
Lord, you are the desire of our hearts this day. Lord, you are the desire of all the nations. And so, Father, we gather here from many nations and, and many people, and we join our hearts together to say, Lord, that in everything we do this day, in every time we spend, in every thought we think, Lord, in every meditation that we are involved with, Lord, may it all be an act of worship to your great and glorious name. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Amen. It says, may it all be an act of worship. Whatever resource, whatever means, whatever heart experience that we have, may it be an act of worship to our great and glorious God. As we conclude this morning, we're going to sing on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. And some of you would know that, uh, most all of you actually probably know that Wyman passed away this past week. So next Sunday, uh, the service of remembrance will take place just shortly after our Sunday morning meeting at uh, 1230 with the 1 o'clock service. And so we ask you to pray for Karen and the family and all those who have been grieving in these last few weeks and months uh, for, for whatever reason. And uh, we think of so many things within the community. It seems like every single day we hear of a, a shooting here or an accident here or a shooting here or an accident here. And I, I seem to see more orange helicopters in the sky than I have in a very, very long time. And so generally when those orange helicopters come into the sky, we know that it's, it's serious business, don't we? And, uh, and maybe we can take and get into the habit, that prayer prompt that I referenced earlier about when we see that orange helicopter, pray for the family. You know, all different ways in which we can, can strengthen our prayers for our community and our congregation in this day. Let's, uh, let's sing this song together, please. Oh. 